This is Christopher Carrington with GMUstudent.com, and today we're going to make the buttons for our fading images slideshow. Now you could just go on Google and steal some buttons that somebody else made, but it's good to know how to make your own buttons for copyright reasons for one thing, and you can also customize them to be whatever color you want, so it's a good thing to know how to do yourself. So follow along with me and I'll teach you really quickly. So let's see what we left off with. So in the previous tutorial we made our templates, we made all of our JPEG files, so everyone should have these, and we also made our fading images slideshow. So if we come into Flash and play this Flash clip, we have our tigers, and then it fades nicely into our lines. So what we are going to do today is make the buttons that will go here, which will be a, a, a previous button, a pause button, and a next button. So that if somebody was watching this Lions clip and they wanted to go back to the Tigers clip because they didn't get to read it, all they would do is click the button and they'd go back. So now that we know what we're going to do, let's do it. So let's go back into Photoshop and we're going to create a new document. So let's go File, New, and let's not worry about the name right now. Let's make it a width of 25, a height of 25, a resolution of 72, and a transparent background. Once you have all that stuff, click OK. So now you can see that the uh, canvas is obviously really small. So let's zoom in there a lot. So click this 100 until it becomes blue. And then type in 2000 and click Enter. So now we're at a zoom of 2000, which is much better. Now we're going to make this circle for our um, image. But before we make the circle, let's pick a fill color that we like. So come down to wherever your fill color is and click that black. And let's make this, type in 031E42. So I'm going to make my buttons like this nice dark blue color and click OK. So now this is going to be the color of our buttons. Let's make the circle that our button is going to go in. So you see this little um, rectangle marquee tool? Click this. We used this in previous tutorials. But click and hold and go down to the elliptical marquee tool. We're going to learn how to use this one today. So change your um, style from normal to fixed size. Make your width 25px. Make sure you put that px in there at all the inches. And then make your height 25px and click enter. So now it's going to make a 25 by 25 circle, a perfect square. So click somewhere in here so that you see the entire circle. It's going to be right at the top left of the canvas. Once the entire circle is in the canvas perfectly, once you can see it all, then you're ready to fill it. So come down where you see your gradient tool, click and hold that until you get to your paint bucket tool, and make sure you still have this blue color here, and click inside the circle and now you have made your circle. So deselect this selection by hitting Command or Control D and now this is going to be your circle. I know it looks a little jagged up right now but if you go back to 100 zoom, so click this arrow and go to 100, it actually looks pretty damn good. So now we are going to make a bevel and emboss for this button just to make it look a little more like a button. So what you want to do is come to layer 1, right click layer 1, and go to blending options and go down to bevel and emboss and click the check mark right there and then click the word bevel and emboss to see the settings for bevel and emboss. And then on your size, let's decrease the size to about 2. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And we're going to leave everything else the same and click OK. Now we are going to make the inside of that button. So we want to create a new layer. And we're going to zoom back in. So click that 100 until it turns blue and go 2000. And click Enter. So now we are going to make a little um, triangle so that people know that this button will make get them to the next um, image. So in order to make a triangle in Photoshop, you see your little square tool? Click and hold that until you get to your polygon tool. So make sure your shape is selected up here. It's the polygon shape here. Change your sides to 3 and make it normal mode 100 opacity. Now you have your blue to white here. Click these double arrows to make it white to blue because we want this to be a white fill. Now play very close attention. I want you to click somewhere inside, the kind of find the middle of your circle. Click and hold and drag it out and you're going to see you're making a triangle. Now in order to make this triangle straight, a good way to do this is you're going to see ruler marks. So try and line up this left the um, left side to one of the ruler marks so that it's pretty much straight up and down. So line it up as well as you can to one of the rulers. So once it looks like it's pretty, it's lined up pretty well, you can just let go. 
And now you have your next button. So we're going to add a bevel emboss to this too. So right click layer two, go blending options, and go down to bevel and emboss, click the check mark, then click bevel and emboss, and just make it a size of one. And click OK. So now if we zoom out to 100, you're going to see this is our left button. Now say if it's not right in the middle of the page like you want it, you can go back to 2000 zoom, and you can go to your marquee tool right here, and you can move this around. As long as you have layer two selected, you can kind of move it around the page. Maybe that's a little more in the center. So if you want to check it, go to 100 zoom, and that looks pretty good. So now we're going to save this. So go File, Save As, and go to your default images folder. So I have it under First Sight and then Images. So I'm going to save this as a JPEG file. And I'm, oh, no, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. We have to save it as a PNG file because it needs to be interlaced. Sorry about that. So highlight um, Unentitled-1 and call it, let's call it Next underscore button and click save and make sure it's interlaced and click OK. That's very important. So now we're going to make the previous button which is actually incredibly easy since we just made the next button. All you have to do is go edit, transform, flip horizontal and now you might want to move it around a little bit but that looks pretty much in the center. I'm pretty happy with that. So once you have it pretty good go file, save as Make sure you're saving it as a PNG file and call it previous underscore button and click save. Make sure it's interlaced and click OK. Now we're going to make the pause button. So what you want to do is you want to delete layer 2 and then create a new layer. Zoom back in, so go to 2000 zoom. And we're going to come to our elliptical marquee tool and grab our rectangle marquee tool. Make it a fixed size, and let's make it a width of 4px and a height of 11px, and click Enter. Now that we have that, we want to click somewhere. We're going to make two basically um, rectangular bars to make people know that this button will pause the slideshow. So you want to click somewhere towards the left of the screen to make your first bar. So let's click somewhere around here. That's pretty good. So once you have it pretty good, go to your paint bucket tool and fill it in with white and then hit command and control D to deselect then make the other one by going um, right click layer 2 and go duplicate layer and click OK now with your click your marquee tool and drag this to the right just by clicking the right on your arrow keys until you're pretty happy with that so now that you've made both of your um, little um, pause marks you want to bevel and emboss both of them so go to layer 2 blending options, you can bevel and emboss this one just make it one pixel and bevel and emboss the last one and we are almost done make that one click OK so let's preview it at a hundred percent and that looks pretty good so we're just gonna go file save as and we're going to call this um, pause underscore button and we are going to change it to a PNG file and click Save. And make sure it's interlaced and we are done. So we have just made our three buttons. In the next tutorial, we are going to put them into Flash and we are going to make them work. So thank you for watching. This has been Christopher Carrington with GMUstudent.com and stay tuned for the next tutorial.